As part of the Valheim Mistlands updates, there are now a number of new workstations that are available in the game. Today we're going to take a look at what each of these new workstations are, including everything there is to know about them, such as how they are unlocked, how they are built, and if they can be upgraded. On top of that, we will of course go through all of the different recipes that each of the new ones gives you, so if you're trying to build some of the new things in game after today's video, you'll know how that's done. So the first thing we're going to talk about is actually the Wisp Fountain, you can see it right here. And that's because this is probably the thing that you'll make first before venturing in to the Mistlands biome. As you can see, you require stone and a stone cutter to be nearby, as well as one of the Torn Spirit. The Torn Spirit is the Yagluf drop, so when you kill the boss Yagluf, you will get Torn Spirits from him. In terms of using the Wisp Fountain, all you have to do is place it down somewhere in your world, and it can be placed literally anywhere in the world. When we look at it, as you can see here, it does say the Wisp Demand Darkness. So when it starts to get to nighttime in your world, come back to the Wisp Fountain and then simply wait, and you'll see that Wisp will start to gather here. And there we go, a Wisp has just formed, and what this Wisp will do now is it gets attracted to the fountain so it comes in and then just decides to sort of fly around the uh, fountain for a bit all we have to do then is hover over it and press e and we can pick up the wisp and there we go we now have our wisp now once you have your wisp light as well as one silver you can go to a workbench and it only has to be level one or better in order to craft up your wisp light and there we go the new item of the wisp light and that is what the wisp fountain is used for you simply right click this to equip it and have it around you and it will help to clear the mist in the mistlands area the next thing we're going to talk about is the mortar and pestle which is the new cauldron upgrade in the game. So this will further upgrade the cauldron on top of all the current cauldron upgrades and allow you to make more recipes in your game. We can see here the recipe for the mortar and pestle is 8 black marble, 6 fine wood and 4 cool wood, plus you need to have a workbench nearby. You unlock the mortar and pestle recipe by getting cool wood, which you can get from chopping down pine trees in the black forest biome. This is an infested mine and it is the new type of dungeon in the Valheim Mistlands. Now as you can see up here, there is a new item in the dungeon that we can get and it's called a black core and when I go ahead and pick this up you'll see I unlock numerous new recipes and there we go the black forge recipe was unlocked by me picking up that black core and if we go ahead and look at the recipe for the black forge you'll see that as well as Yggdrasil for wood and black marble the black cores are required to make this now the dungeons themselves can look one of two ways they can either look like a structure like this right here and you'd have to kill all the seekers if you weren't in ghost mode like I am for this tutorial and then you simply run down the stairs like this and when you get right to the bottom there'll be an option to enter into the dungeon area now this right here is another way the dungeons can look and if I fly up here a little bit you see you get this like rock formation that's coming out uh, obviously I've placed all of these wisp lights by the way just to try and clear some of the mist so you can see what's going on but as you can probably gather these can be difficult to find the mist does cover these dungeons pretty well so you have to do a lot of traveling around in the mistlands to find these sorts of things but that's another way you can get into the dungeon so in the new black forge we can make all the carapace armor we can also make the new carapace arrows some new of the weapons and tools and bolts and things like that we also have the new bow and also the new crossbow in here as well as these awesome new lanterns on top of that the carapace shields are in here as is the new hammer spear crom and miss walker the upgrade for the black forge is the black forge cooler you can see here it just needs the iron copper and black marble and of course for a black forge to be nearby and this is how it looks in the game pretty awesome that we'll look to it now the next item i want to quickly talk about is this one right here the sap extractor as it is in the new crafting menu in the game now you see here this will require some of the new igdra wood as well as black metal and a dwarver extractor. If you'd like to see a full guide on sap farming I'll put a link in my video description where I actually go through this in detail. But the too long didn't watch version is you get a sap extractor and you put it in one of these roots right here and it will extract sap over time. Now once you're done with harvesting sap these trees will run out of sap and you'll have to move on to a new route but do mark their location because once you leave them for a while the sap will regenerate in these roots and can be farmed again. Now to unlock the sap extractor you'll need to find a structure like this that's full of Dwerger or one of the outdoor encampments that has the round stake walls and again will also be full of Dwerga. Heading inside this is what we are looking for the Dwerga component crate and the only way to access what's inside the crate is to smash it open. However when you do so all of these mages and rogues that are guarding this area will suddenly start to attack you so they're not actually aggro towards you at first they're friendly but if you start to attack their building or their crate then they will start to attack you. As such you're going to need to take these guys out first and don't take them lightly because they are really difficult especially when they're in a big group so do go ahead heavily geared and be ready for quite a big battle. But if I go ahead and just smash this crate open, I'm in god mode right now so I'm going to be pretty safe, you'll see the item we got here is this one right here, the Dwerger Extractor, and that will unlock the Sap Extractor recipe. And the sap that we farm from the Sap Extractor is used in other recipes which we're going to cover later on in this video, as well as processing of other items in the game. So it is a useful progressional tool to have throughout the game. So next we're going to talk about this right here, this is the Ita Refinery. Now this looks fantastic, but it looks even better when it's actually processing, as you'll see in a 
bit. Now the reason I have a little staircase going up to it is you actually have to input some of the items into the top here and then other items get input into this little horn and then the whole process works. I'm going to show you how to do that in a second. Now this is the recipe for it so as you go through the game and you collect these different materials you will unlock the ISO refinery and be able to make it. Now the two ingredients we put in are sap and we've already been through sap in this video so you guys can check that out if you want to see how you get sap but up here we need to put in some soft tissue. So one of the ways you can get the soft tissue is to kill the Dwerger but the much better way to do it is to find a structure like this and you will see them throughout the Mistlands biome. So we have the petrified bone here which is the rib cage and if we were to take this down we'd get a ton of black marble from it. Moving on up here though we have the skull and again this is petrified bone so we'd get more black marble from mining this. However if we mine into the center of this skull we can actually get a ton of the soft tissue and I'm going to show you guys that right now. Okay so I've actually only had to mine a little bit into this one and already we can see it. So the soft tissue represents where the brain would be and inside the skull there will be dozens of soft tissue pieces. Do be sure to dig down underground as well because I found that when I've dug a few of these out underground there can be a wealth of extra soft tissue that you can get. So that's the best way to get the soft tissue in this game. So once you have your soft tissue you can just go ahead and walk up to the top of your ISO refinery and it just goes in here just like that. You then use sap to put in just here like this and you'll see that the machine will start to work and it's got a really cool animation actually while it starts working. And once it's done processing you'll get this right here which is a refined ISO. Now do be careful because once it's done processing the ISO will start to fall onto the floor here and no doubt you'll put a load of materials in here to get a load of ISO spawning and just leaving it down there. But as you're about to see this refined ISO will just randomly shoot off sparks and these sparks can damage you but more importantly they can damage the building around them. There we go, there's a spark right there. So when it does that sort of damage, if it was to keep damaging like a bottom block of your build, for example, like a supporting block, then the whole thing could come crumbling down. So don't leave them here too long. Go and pick them up and keep them safe in your inventory where they're not going to harm your building. And this refined item is going to unlock recipes and be used in recipes such as the Galda table and also the rune table, which is an improvement for the Galda table. So the next really cool looking crafting station that we have is this right here, which is the Galda table. Now the recipe for this is shown here. So we're going to need Yggdrasil wood, black metal, black cores, refined ISA, and a workbench nearby. Throughout this video, I've shown you how to get all of these materials, so by now you should know how to get them all, but let's talk about what the Galda table can actually do. So in terms of the recipes for it, the new favorite item for all of us, the feather cape, is actually made here, so it's very important for that recipe alone. Beyond that though, the seal breaker is also made in here. This is the item used to spawn in the new boss, and also you get the four different types of magical items that have been added to the game. If you want to see a full magical guide, I'll put a link in the video description where you can go and check out the guide I made on this. Now one final thing to mention is the artisan table and the reason I mention it guys is for these three items right here and that is the mechanical spring and the two new types of missile. These two missiles are used in the new ballista and the mechanical spring is also used to make the ballista as well as the new trap. The artisan table can be got on by killing Moda and the drops that you get from Moda will unlock the artisan table. So not a new crafting station as such but one that is going to be quite useful for some of the new items and I thought it was worth a quick mention at the end of today's video. Now the dad jokes are of course coming guys but I just want to say thank you so much for watching and if you enjoyed it please do consider liking and subscribing for more but for now thanks again and i'll see you next time how does a narcissist screw in a light bulb he just holds it still while the world revolves around him how many paranoid people does it take to change a light bulb who wants to know did you know that by law you have to turn your headlights on when it's raining in sweden but how am i meant to know when it's raining in sweden i was addicted to the hokey pokey song but i turned myself around